thing called isotopes. Now, if you remember what Dalton said, he said that all atoms, um, all atoms of an element are identical. Now, that was in their chemical and physical properties, okay, in C and P, all right? But it turns out that there are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons, and that is the definition of an isotope. An isotope is simply an atom with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons all right just as a little side note uh, I've usually had the definitions written out, and I've been pulling them out from the side. And for some reason, I didn't do it in this podcast, and so you're having to look at my writing. If you would tell me tomorrow if, uh, you know, Richardson, your writing was so horrible, please type it. Um, or if, you know, it doesn't matter to you, it would be great if you let me know. Okay, so here we have these atoms that have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. So it turns out that you could have carbon sitting around... Uh, with 12 protons, okay? But every once in a while, you can have... Oh, pardon me, pardon me. Let me, let me back up. I just messed up. You could have a carbon atom uh, with six neutrons, all right? But sometimes carbon floats around with eight neutrons. Now... The number of protons dictates the element, and it really is the overriding uh, reason why each element has its properties. So uh, carbon, uh, carbon 12 and carbon 14 are still carbon, but because one has 8 neutrons and one has 12 neutrons, they're slightly different in their properties. And so uh, we'll get a little bit more into that, but I want to sh talk about how we represent these different elements. Let's say, for example, we have an isotope of uh, copper, all right? And this uh, copper happens to weigh 63. Now, by the way, when we talk about this 63, this 63 right here, right there, and the same 63 right there, is known as the mass number. And the mass number is simply the sum of the protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. Okay? So there we go. And that's and this is only for when we're talking about specific isotopes. If you were to look on the periodic table to look for this copper with the 63, you wouldn't find it. Because look at what copper's uh, uh, atomic uh, weight is. It's 63.546. And look at carbon. It's 12.01. You're not going to find this 63, and you're not going to find this 13. All right. It's important to understand that when you see these mass numbers... They're talking about a specific isotope. And you will see these isotopes represented two ways. One way is to write the, the name of the atom, or pardon me, the isotope, with its mass number uh, after the dash. The other way is to write the symbol with the mass number on top. Okay, so that's mass number. And then this one right here is the atomic number. Okay, so what I kind of like about this second one right here 
is it tells you both numbers. If I told you copper 63 and I wanted you to tell me how many protons, you would have to look on the periodic table and find copper. But this one already tells you the atomic number. So you won't find the mass number anywhere over here on the periodic table. It's not there. All right. But uh, you will be given that mass number if we're talking about a specific isotope. So right here, which one is this? This one right here, mass number, right? And this one right here, that is the atomic number. Okay. And then this one right here for carbon-13, mass number. All right? So hopefully that's kind of clear. But let's take this a step further because the, really the advantage of knowing which isotope is it allows you to find out exactly how many neutrons are in one atom of that isotope. So here's two, uh, uh, well actually here's four isotopes represented. I've got one up here with the symbols represented. Okay, another one up here with the symbols. Then down here, we've got the word, the ones written with words. Okay, now what we do to find the number of neutrons, and you probably have kind of figured it out. If you look over here, and you know that the mass number is protons and neutrons, and the bottom number uh, is just the number of protons. Well, if you look at the difference between the two, then yeah, you get the number of neutrons. And that's kind of what I want to say right here. So to find the number of neutrons, you simply subtract the atomic number from the mass number to find the number of neutrons. Now, in, in some of your science classes, your uh, science teacher might have had you look at the periodic table and take this, um, this uh, atomic mass number uh, and round it up or down. We're not going to do that. All right. Um, I know that's a common uh, thing that, that teachers do, but we're not going to do that. We're going to simply look at exactly which one we have. So, uh, again, if I were to f try to figure out some things about this isotope right here, for number of protons, what would you say? 29, right? How about this? How about electrons? Well, you would say 29 too because you know that the atoms are neutral. And then as far as the neutrons, what's the answer? Well, what's 29 minus 63? Okay, it's 34. So there you go. Again, right here we've got protons, and up here we have protons plus neutrons. All right, so do pause the video. Do this exact thing right here for carbon. All right, did you do it? Well, let's see. Number of protons, hopefully you wrote 6. Number of electrons, 6. Number of neutrons, and the answer would be 7. All right? Do the same thing for these two isotopes, chlorine-35 and bromine-80. All right. Now, hopefully you did this. The first thing you need to do is, if you don't know the atomic number of chlorine, you've got to find it on the periodic table. And it's over here. It's element number 17. All right? So 17 tells me that chlorine-35 has 17 protons, right? How many electrons? 17. And then as far as neutrons, what am I going to do? Notice there's no atomic number, right? But we know that this is the atomic number. So what's 17, uh, or 35 minus 17? The answer is 18. Hopefully that's making sense to you. All right? Again, pause the video. Try the exact same thing with bromine. All right, did you do it? First thing we want to do is find bromine. Here it is way over here. It's element 35, right? So how many protons? 35. Electrons? 35. And then neutrons? 30, or 80 minus 35? 45, right? Okay. So that's kind of how you find the number of neutrons. It's a pretty simple thing. It just involves subtraction. But you've got to keep the idea of mass number and atomic number straight. Okay, This mass number right here, you've got to keep that straight. You won't find it on the periodic table. It'll be given to you, or you might, might have to come up with it, which is kind of what the, the next exercise I have. Look at this first question. What is the mass number of an isotope of bromine with 42 neutrons? All right. So what I want you to do is take a moment, pause the video, 
And you could try all three of these and then uh, wait for my answers, or you could just try one. But try this first one. Now, again, they w I want to know the mass number. Okay? The mass number equals the number of protons plus neutrons. Well, if I know how many neutrons there are, I just have to find out how many protons there are. So what do I do? I go to the periodic table, and I find the, the, the atomic number for bromine. There it is, 35, right? So the question... The answer is, what's 35 plus 42? And if you said 77 is the mass number, you got it right. Good job. Okay, what about this next one? Write the symbol and the name for an isotope of iron with 32 neutrons. Well, did you do it? The first thing you would probably have to do is look on the periodic table and find iron. Okay, there's iron. Its symbol is Fe, and it's got an atomic number of 26. All right, so this question writes the symbol and the name. Well, I'm going to do the symbol first. So I'm going to write Fe. And what goes at the bottom? The atomic number, right? So I'm going to put 26. And then the mass number, I have to figure out. Remember, the mass number, this one up here, is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, right? So 32 and 26, 58. Now notice what the other question here. What's the name? Well, I've got to write iron, and then I put a dash, and then what goes right here? Hopefully, you would have written 58. The mass number goes right there. Now, I know I may be going fast, but again, pause that video, rewind, try and get this down, because we're going to be doing a number of these in class, and I think you'll get it with a little bit of practice. Okay, this last one, write the symbol and name for an isotope with 50 protons and 70 neutrons. Okay, well, I don't have to look up the element, uh, or I don't have to figure out which one they're talking about, uh, except I don't know, or maybe you don't know, the element that uh, has 50 protons. So let's go to the periodic table, go to element 50, okay, we're talking about 10, All right? So just like last time, I'm going to write SN, it's got 50 down here, and it's got 70 neutrons. So I've got to write the mass number, which is these two numbers added together. So I'm going to put 120 up here. Right? And then what would I call this thing? This is 10 dash 120. All right. So there's your little intro to atomic number, mass number, atomic mass, and isotopes. And we will do a really cool lab with this, and uh, we'll work on practicing with this. Any questions you have, please bring them to me, and I hope this was a good session for you. See you later.